Good evening. Thank you all for being here. My name is Angie Gant. I'm one of the counselors at Plainview High School. And this is uh, my friend Dana Marchman. She is the counselor at South Elementary. And we are here tonight to talk to you about gratitude. So we get to have a little bit lighter topic than some of the ones before us, if you've been here before. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about gratitude, and I'm going to turn it over to Dana. She's going to get us started. I'm using the clicker, so I don't want to be a happy clicker. Okay, so the first thing to think about is what does gratitude or being grateful mean to you? Take you, give you a moment to think about that. Okay, and what is one thing that you're grateful for? Why don't you take a moment and share at your table? What is one thing that you're grateful for? <laughs> I'm grateful for all of you that came tonight to hear our presentation. Okay, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the science of gratitude. And this information is taken from um, a website called mindful.com. Okay, research shows that gratitude isn't just a pleasant feeling. It's being grateful can also support greater health, happiness, and wisdom in ourselves and our communities. too far? There we go. In the past two decades, a growing body of evidence in the field of social science has found that gratitude has measurable benefits for just about every area of our lives. Gratitude appears to contribute substantially to individual well-being and physical health, so much that at the Greater Good Science Center at the University of California, Berkeley, a leader in research in this, on the science of social and emotional well-being, describes gratitude as the social glue Key, that's key to building and nurturing strong relationships. Robert Emmons, who's a professor of psychology at the University of California, Davis, and one of the world's leading experts on the science of gratitude, defines gratitude as having two parts. The first is an affirmation of goodness. People can learn to wake up to the good around them and notice the gifts they have received. The second part of gratitude is recognizing that the source of this goodness rests outside of oneself, that we receive these gifts from other people and sometimes from a higher power, fate, or the natural world. In other words, gratitude helps people realize that they wouldn't be where they are without the help of others. Gratitude is more than just a momentary good feeling. Scientists who have studied written gratitude interventions, such as gratitude letters or journals, have found benefits for an individual's mental health and well-being. Gratitude practices also appear to help you feel more satisfied in life and can boost your self-esteem, according to peer-reviewed research. In one study involving nearly 300 adults seeking counseling services at a university, one randomized group wrote a gratitude letter each week for three weeks. The gratitude group reported significantly better health, mental health compared to the control group at follow-up 12 weeks after the last writing exercise. Another type of written gratitude practice is counting blessings or three good things. A study of this practice found that people who wrote down three things that had gone well in their day and identified the causes of those good things were significantly happier and less depressed even six months after the study ended. So many of us um, have, have you, have you ever had a gratitude journal or had that practice before? It does help to, to key in on those three things every day, to write three good things that have gone well. Okay, how it works, it strengthens our positive recall. So how exactly do these practices work to improve our mental well-being? In general, people are more cognitively aware of their headwinds or barriers they face, then the tailwinds, which are benefits they receive. And that's kind of typical of us, isn't it? That we look for those headwinds, our barriers. By paying more attention to our tailwinds, studies have shown that we can accentuate feelings of happiness, optimism, and positive emotion. Strengthening your positive recall bias makes it easier to see the good things around you, even when times are dark, says Nancy Davis Co., author of the book, the Thank You Project, Cultivating Happiness, One Letter of Gratitude at a Time. Nancy set a lofty goal of writing 50 thank you letters to people in her life and found that the practice improved her ability to weather some of life's bigger challenges. 
At first, Nancy found it difficult to come up with a list of 50 people. But after she got started on the letters, the practice naturally boosted positive emotion and she was able to extend her gratitude well beyond her family and friends. Nancy encourages those writing gratitude letters to find the creative people whose work carries you beyond yourself, whose vision helps you clarify your own, whose talent and hard work have combined to create a body of work that brings you simple joy. So why practice? It helps deepen our resilience. Enduring gratitude is not just about happiness and positivity. It doesn't require you to ignore or stifle negative emotions. In the book, The Gratitude Project, How the Science of Thankfulness Can we Rewire Our Brains for Resilience, Optimism, and Greater Good, Robert Emmons writes that practicing gratitude magnifies positive feelings more than it reduces negative feelings. Gratitude helps you see the bigger picture and become more resilient in the face of adversity. We need to nourish a grateful body. When digging into the science of gratitude, we begin to see there are more dimensions to this emotion than meet the eye. In the scientific literature, gratitude is studied in several different ways. For instance, we have trait gratitude, which refers to whether people have a naturally grateful personality. Gratitude is a mood which tracks daily fluctuations in gratitude. Gratitude is an emotion which describes a passing feeling of gratitude when receiving a thank you letter, for example. The practice of gratitude and the interventions that scientists use in their studies are activities designed to boost gratitude as a mood or emotion. Research published in the last decade has shown that grateful people, those who have trait gratitude, have fewer common health complaints such as headaches, digestion issues, respiratory infections, runny noses, dizziness, and sleep problems. It appears that practicing gratitude could also help to alleviate those pesky health problems. In one study, a group of college students who wrote about things they were grateful for uh, for once per week for 10 weeks reported fewer physical symptoms, such as headaches, shortness of breath, sore muscles, and nausea compared to the two other control groups. So yet another reason to practice gratitude for good health. So how it works, it can calm your nervous system. Physiological changes associated with gratitude are typically a reduction in blood pressure, an increase in vagal tone, which is taken as an index of increased parasympathetic symp sympathetic influence on the peripheral nervous system, says Dr. Emiliana Simon Thomas, science director at the Greater Good Science Center. The parasympathetic nervous system, the part of the nervous system that allows our body to rest and digest, can help you conserve energy by slowing the heart rate, stimulating digestion, and contributing to overall relaxation. This soothing of the nervous system may be one mechanism by which gratitude works to calm the body. A study of heart failure patients who were randomly assigned to either an eight-week gratitude journaling group or a treatment-as-usual group found that patients in their gratitude group showed more parasympathetic heart rate variability, which is a sign of better heart health. <clears throat> so why practice? It helps us make healthier choices. Strange as it may seem, gratitude also can also encourage us to fuel our bodies with nourishing foods. Research shows that grateful people report better physical health because they tend to engage in healthy activities such as focusing on nutrition. We have found that getting people to express gratitude could help them work toward healthier eating behaviors like more fruits and vegetables and less junk food, said Lisa Walsh, PhD, a postdoctoral research associate in social personality psychology at the University of California, Los Angeles, whose graduate studies included research with Sonia Lewis-Bermisky's Positive Activities and Well-Being, which stands for PAW, laboratory at the University of California, Riverside. One of the PAW lab studies, high school students pre-selected a healthy eating goal and were asked to either write weekly gratitude letters or list their daily activities. To the teens who expressed gratitude reported healthier eating behavior over time compared to those who just listed their activities. 
Other, student, other studies of people's physical health outcomes have found that gratitude journaling can lead to better quality sleep and lower blood pressure, two things that are very key. So it also makes us thankful to those we love. In addition to giving individual benefits, gratitude may also help to strengthen ties with friends, loved ones, and those in our wider communities. The Find, Remind, Bond theory, first proposed by psychologist Sarah Aljo, an associate professor at University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, suggests that gratitude can help people identify good candidates for a new relationship, which is find, appreciate existing relationships, which is remind, and motivate people to maintain or invest in these relationships, which is bind. As Sarah writes in a 2012 paper on her theory, gratitude starts inside one individual and its effects spread to a dyadic relationship and perhaps throughout a social network. Social connections is likely key to well-being, says Lisa Walsh. She explains that gratitude might not be an emotion that just makes people feel good. It appears to have social implications by motivating individuals to improve themselves. In an upcoming study from the Paul Lab Laboratory at UC Riverside, high school students who expressed gratitude had a mixed experience. They felt elevated, a positive emotion, and indebted. Immediately after writing their gratitude letters, the students also felt motivated to improve themselves. Find, remind, bond theory suggests that expressing gratitude may prompt individuals to pay back the kindness they have received and can also motivate a person to make decisions that will strengthen their relationships. Gratitude may increase a person's desire to spend more time with someone and it encourages pro-social behaviors. So how it works with better communication. Gratitude also plays an important role in maintaining romantic relationships, acting as a booster shot to remind us why our partners are valuable and worth holding on to. By practicing gratitude, couples can initiate a cycle of generosity. One partner's gratitude inspires the other to act in a way that reaffirms their commitment. One study found that receiving a thoughtful gesture from a partner was followed by increased feelings of gratitude and indebtedness. In experiencing gratitude from these acts of kindness led both partners to feel more connected and satisfied with their relationship the next day. While many studies have examined the effects of writing gratitude, all the ways we communicate through letters, conversations, social media, are avenues for expressing gratitude. Gratitude may also open the door to healthier communication styles with rela within a relationship. Since the practice leads to more positive perceptions of our partners, friends, and family, and likely greater trust, we feel more comfortable talking through disagreements. In one study, participants who expressed gratitude toward a romantic partner or close friend reported greater ease when voicing relationship concerns in the future. So why practice? It's better together. Gratitude has made our family closer, said Randy Joy, a chiropractor and life coach living in Ottawa. She's been practicing gratitude with her family for about five years. When we talk about our gratefulness and what we're grateful for, we have a better connection, she says. Whether it's a gratitude walk where they discuss what they're grateful for or a list of their gratefuls at the dinner table, Randy's family takes every opportunity to practice together. Whether you hope to boost your mood and mental health, protect your physical health, or improve your personal relationships, a rich body of research in the field of social sciences has found that gratitude offers significant benefits. The takeaway, cultivating gratitude can open the door to a different perspective, one that values the goodness in our lives. With practice, we can learn to see the bigger picture and navigate adversity with greater resilience. What is one thing you tend to underappreciate? We're going to pause for just a minute. Tell me what stuck out to you in all of that. What'd you hear? What are some of the benefits of expressing gratitude? Better health, such as? Lower blood pressure, lower heart rate, lower stress, better overall feeling. What were some other things?
Yes. Yes. Intentional focus. What else? Yes. 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 Not again. Here comes the problem. Very good. Nice. And three things. Is that a whole lot? How long does it take to list three things once a day? This long or this long? This long, right? What else? What were some of the ways to, well, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I want to turn this a little bit to you. A lot of times when we think about gratitude, we think about all the things out there that I'm grateful for. But I want you to think about yourself for just a minute. And I want you to try to answer this question. What is one thing you tend to underappreciate? Underappreciate means I need to give that a little more focus. I need to focus my gratitude a little more in this area. And if you're willing to share, I would love to hear your answer. One thing that I tend to underappreciate is my husband. He does a lot of work for our family, even though our kids are out of the house now. And I do not tell him thank you near enough. And not just thank you, but recognizing the work that he's doing. Right? Anybody else willing to share? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. The puppy dogs. Anybody else? Let's see what's next. Here it is. How do we express gratitude? What are some things you heard in what Dana presented that you're like, oh, I want to try that? Or some things that you already do. Give us some good ideas. How can we practice gratitude? Not just at Thanksgiving, but every day. What you got? And is that our norm? That is not our norm. I've been talking to high school kids all day today. And I say, you know, the, the cheapest thing you have that you don't have to pay money for your words. But how comfortable is it for most of us to walk up to someone and say, I am so thankful for you and what you, and here's what you mean to me in my life. And all the kids are like, no, that's not easy. But here's the thing about gratitude. It's a two-way street. If you will do that, it makes you feel better and it makes that other person feel better. So it's a win-win, right? What are some other ways we can express gratitude? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Recognizing the little things. The little things stack up to be big things. That's a great comment. How many times a day do we say thank you? Just a simple thank you. Some of us are better at it than others, and I'll put myself in the other boat. I don't say it enough. What else? Or 
And so the way our brains are is that if we react to what he said, I mean, it would be to be intentional. Mm -hmm. So if you intentionally think that things, not all of you can think that it's great, or whether it's, I mean, like, it's time for the Tuesday. Best day. If you intentionally think of something that you're grateful for, mm -hmm. then that stimulates the brain to move past that. That's what our brains are having this level. Mm -hmm. We talk to kids about, about scales, zero to 10, right? So zero is, this is the most horrible day. I'm, I'm not happy. This is the worst I've ever felt. And 10 is, this is the best day ever. I can't imagine being happier or having more joy. How many of us probably hang out around four or five or six in the middle somewhere? And do you ever catch yourself thinking, man, I just wish things would be a little bit better. I wish I was a little more happy. I wish I was happier. I wish, I wish, I wish. This, and like Miss Sweeney said, this is one way to get that number up is to practice gratitude. And it's not hard. Does it take a minute? Does it take some time? It takes some effort? Depending on what you're going to do, yes. And it doesn't have to be that gratitude shown to others. It can be those things that you just do yourself, like Dana talked about. The gratitude journal. The counting your blessings. Um, the just sitting and meditating and just thinking about all the things that have happened that are good, um, that you appreciate, that you've enjoyed, and just kind of saying thank you to, for that. That can bring your number up. So when you find yourself at a four, five, six, and you want to be at a seven, eight, nine, try some of these things. Anybody have anything else on how to express your gratitude? I love the three things a day because that is so easy. What are some things you can do to incorporate an attitude of gratitude into your family's daily life? I see lots of young people. So parents, what can we do? How can we raise the next generation to have a bigger, better attitude of gratitude than even what we have? And kids, if you have ideas, share. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's excellent. Yes. Tell your children thank you. We, we model that for them, right? Anything that they do that you can point out that's good, you know, praise the progress. I'm, I'm thankful that you're studying because that's what you're here for is to learn and get your education. So good job. I see, I see you hard at work. Um, there's lots of things we can do and we have some resources for you. So let's keep going. I loved this quote. So consider this. Gratitude can transform common days into thanksgiving, turn routine jobs into joy, and change ordinary opportunities into blessings. Those are pretty big paradigm shifts, and that's what gratitude does. Transforms common days into thanksgiving, routine jobs into joy. Work can be joy, if you're thankful for it, absolutely. And turn ordinary opportunities into blessings. So looking for that. The studies that Dana talked about, um, wherever those people were focused, that's where the benefits were. Or that's where the negative impacts were. The ones that were focused on the good things, their lives were enriched. The ones that were focused on the negative, not so much. Right, their their level, like Robin talked about, was was lower. And I don't. You may not have mentioned the specific study where they did. They had one group that was focused on writing down the good things that happened and the things they were thankful for every day. Another group actually wrote down the things that irritated them. In one study, and we shared that study with our kids at the high school today. And that group, and then they had one group that just wrote down the facts, no emotion attached to it, no good, no bad. And so 
the plateau level that Miss Sweeney was talking about with the group that just wrote down the facts, they kind of stayed the same. The group that wrote down all the negative stuff, their mood dropped. And then the group that focused on the positive and what they were thankful for, theirs elevated. So we have a little bit more, but we do want to thank you for joining us today. We are truly grateful for our students. Parents, thank you for sharing them with us. They enrich our lives daily. We are so grateful for all of your kiddos and for you as parents. And we love opportunities like this to join with you. Um, and we hope that you see us as part of the team, that we are a village helping um, educate your kids and helping and cheering them on and watching them grow. I think, do we have to, oh, I can touch the screen, whoops, we have a little video, maybe, so what is ClickUp? ClickUp is an all-in-one productivity software where you can manage everything and anything related. Say thank you for grace, thank you for mercy, thank you for understanding, thank you for wisdom, thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. So I live my life. That's why I, why I am one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every moment that led to this day. Thank you for the hard times. They made me appreciate the good times. Thank you for the lessons. They were needed for my development. Thank you for my eyes that get to witness the miracles of today and tomorrow. Thank you for everything I take for granted. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for my drive. Thank you for my spirit. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for giving me the courage to fight through the hard times. Thank you for the people in my life, those I love and those I learn from. Thank you for it all. Thank you. Thank you. It's the key that opens the door to infinite happiness, unlocks the door to everything we are really seeking in life, happiness and contentment. No matter what you say you want, money, riches, help, to help others, why do you really want it? When you drill deep down, the only reason anyone wants anything is the feeling we believe we will get from having it. That all boils down to happiness and contentment. And the truth is, we can have it now if we are grateful. And if you get quiet, get away from the noise of the world, and think for a moment about what you can be grateful for, I'm sure you can find plenty. Be grateful there's food on the table, air in your lungs, life in your body. Get grateful that you have opportunity opportunity to take your life to a whole other level, to decide right now that you are going to live your dreams and never settle until you do. Get grateful for the mental strength you've been given to survive the hard times. Get grateful for your limbs if you have them. Many are not so blessed. Your eyesight if you have it. Many are not so blessed. Your hearing if you have it. Many are not so blessed. The health you do have Many are in the worst positions. Get grateful for that one person that has had an impact in your life, or many people if you are so blessed. Then get grateful you can choose to be that person for someone else, that one that makes a difference in someone else's life, no matter how small. Get grateful you get to experience this magical universe. Today, look for miracles. I guarantee if you are looking, you will see them. There are unlimited things to be grateful for. Open your eyes. Unlock your amazing life. It's ready for you right now. Thank you for this day, whatever it brings. 
whether a challenge I need to grow and line up to teach me patience, an unexpected blessing, every moment of joy, whatever the day brings, thank you. Whatever it brings, I pray I have enough presence in each moment to know that no circumstance is my life. No high or low, no event, no thing is my life. Life is energy, and I know I'm so much more than my physical body. Thank you for my ability to love, to give to others my authentic love and kindness without expecting anything in return. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my presence. Thank you for my ability to attract only the things and people that are in harmony with what I need in my life. Thank you, thank you for this day, whatever it brings. I have to share again, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Okay, this is a QR code if you want to scan it. There are resources and activi activities on here for families. They're broken down by age group. Um, so if you're interested in, in taking and looking at some of this at home and actually trying to incorporate some things with your kiddos to help them increase their gratitude, um, this QR code will get you to lots of resources. And again, we thank you all so much for coming tonight. Um, we enjoyed getting to put this together for y'all. So y'all have a great evening and a wonderful holiday break next week. Enjoy your kids at home. Thank you all. <laughs> yeah, if you have one that you can find.